Hey friends, my name is Oleg, this is Mr. Bond, welcome back to the YouTube channel. In today's video we're going to do a full review of Bagani Designs Daytona. Now right off the bat this watch is not going to be for everyone uh, because it's a Rolex Daytona homage or a straight up copy if you will, just with a different logo. So if you're in that category, totally understand, but for the rest of you who want to see this review, uh, here it goes. I got it from AliExpress, there are a whole bunch of different sellers selling this watch, I'll leave a link to the one that I got it from. I think it's about $85, $90, however shop around because they often go on sale from one seller or from a different seller and you could get a discount. I've seen them as low as $60. US Now the reason why I really wanted to review this watch, because of the specs. Sapphire crystal, stainless steel bracelet and the case, ceramic bezel insert and the Seiko Mega Quartz VK63 movement. All of that sounds pretty good, especially under $100. I've seen specs like that and much worse specs than that on watches that cost twice or three times as much as this one. So is it any good? Well, let's get into the review. Let's begin with the case dimensions. It has a diameter of 40 millimeters, a lock to lock distance of 48 millimeters. However, it does have these first protruding male links. So the actual width of the case is about 53 millimeters from this point to this point. It has a 20 millimeter lock width and the bracelet does taper to about 16 millimeters by the clasp. It is also 11 millimeters thick. Here's what the watch looks like on my seven and a half inches wrist. I like this fit, 40 millimeters generally for my size of a wrist looks great. Of course, this watch has great proportions. It's a copy of Rolex Daytona, so it's made to fit really well. The first male lengths are a bit annoying. They don't protrude too much. So if you have wrists of over, let's say six and a half inches, you shouldn't have any problems with protrusion. The crown and the chrono pushers don't dig into my wrist and the watch has a pretty comfortable weight of 130 grams. 316L stainless steel case and bracelet. All polished finish on this case. It looks okay. It's not the best I've seen, but at this price category, I am willing to forgive it. The corners are not that sharp and the sides of the case, you can see that the polishing it's all right, but could be better. The bracelet has alternating finish, so it's brushed on the outer edges and has this polished center link. The crown's at the three o'clock position. These tiny crown guards looks pretty good. It's a screw down crown signed with Pagani logo. You can still see that blue protective film. I tried to get it all out with the toothpick. No luck there. The way the logo is designed, it's kind of hard to get it all out. Somebody suggested I use nail polish remover to get this all out. I'll ask my girlfriend if she has any and I'll report back in a comment section if I was able to get it all off uh, with the nail polish remover. So screw down crown, pretty good action actually. And when you pull the crown out, it feels pretty good, feels pretty solid. It doesn't feel like the crown is gonna fall off or anything. We also have these two pushers here, the chrono pushers, one at the two o'clock position, one at the four o'clock position. They are both also screw down. We also have a screw down case back. Not too much writing there. Just has a Pagani logo and also says water resistant to 100 meters and stainless steel. Now that water resistant to 100 meters is slightly puzzling because on the website where this watch is sold on AliExpress, it says 30 meters of water resistance. However, on the case back, it says 100 meters. It also has screw down crown and screw down case back so I wouldn't be surprised if it actually has 100 meters or somewhere in between 30 and 100 meters. If any of you guys have done any water resistance tests on this watch, please leave your findings in a comment section below. The watch also has a piece of sapphire crystal. It's a flat piece, looks pretty good. Not too much separation between the case and the crystal. And another surprising part of this watch is actually this ceramic bezel insert. So where the tachymeter is, well, that's actually ceramic and it looks good. It actually looks great. It plays with the light really well. It is more functional than a stainless steel or aluminum bezel insert because it is tougher to scratch and to damage. So that's a great addition, especially at this price point. To my eyes, this dial is the weakest part of the watch, the dial and the bracelet. We're going to talk about a bracelet in a minute here. The dial is not all bad. There are some positives, like the applied indices for hour marks, quite like that. 
not too much writing. I mean, the top does look kind of busy with the Pagani logo, then Pagani design, chronograph, and sports all written there by the 12. Not too much writing at the bottom, just Japanese movement. And again, we're going to talk about a movement in a minute here. I also really like the integration of the date window on this watch. If you watched any of my previous videos, you know that date windows tend to be a bit divisive for me. On this one, it looks great. The date window is, first of all, pretty large, so it's easy to tell what date it is. I don't like those dainty little date windows that are kind of useless. You can't really tell what date it is unless you are really close to looking at the watch. This one does not have that problem. Also, the background color of the date wheel is color matched to the dial color, which is great to see. It's a feature that is missing in many much more expensive watches. The subdials are also done pretty well. So the subdial at the three o'clock position, that's the subdial for a 24 hour indicator. The subdial by the six o'clock position, all the way at the bottom there, that's the seconds hand for the main timekeeping. And the subdial by the nine o'clock position, that's the 60 minutes counter for the chronograph. The set of hands are all right too. We have this literal arrow on the seconds hand for the chronograph, quite like that. The hands and the hour indices are loomed. Here's a loom shot for you. It's nothing impressive, but then again, this is not a dagger watch, so you're not expecting too much loom anyways. So what is my problem? Why do I say this dial is kind of the weak part of the watch? I think the dial texture is not right. It's not paper, but it kind of looks like it's made out of paper. And that's what makes this watch seem a little bit cheap. It has a sapphire crystal, it has a ceramic bezel insert, it's made out of stainless steel, has a pretty good movement, the bracelet is alright, has some negatives, but it's alright. So if it had a nice ceramic looking dial, or even a ceramic dial, that would complete the look and make this watch look much, much more expensive. I mean, already it looks much more expensive than its price tag, but with the proper dial and the proper dial texture, it would just take it to the next level. The movement powering this chronograph is a Seiko VK63 Mega Quartz movement. Essentially, it's a quartz movement that is powered by the battery, of course, with a mechanical chronograph module added on top. So when you press the pushers for the chronograph, it almost feels like a mechanical chronograph. Doesn't quite have the same feel as a real mechanical chronograph, but it is pretty close. Another cool feature of Mega Quartz movement, like this one, is the fact that this chronograph seconds hand ticks at about five ticks per second, so it gives it an appearance of a much smoother tick. It doesn't tick one at a time, like a regular quartz chronograph. It has that nice smooth motion. The final cool feature of Mecha Quartz chronographs is the flyback option. So you don't have to stop the chronograph and then reset it. You can just reset it from the motion. So as it's still ticking, you can press the bottom pusher and it resets back to zero. Really nice and very satisfying. And you can hear that click. I am a big fan of these Mecha Quartz chronograph movements and I think they're kind of underrated in the watch community. Sure, it's not as good as a mechanical or automatic chronograph, but still really, really good, much cheaper for maintenance and of course, much cheaper to purchase. With this one, servicing is super easy. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on the servicing because chronograph movements are expensive to service. All you do is pop in a new battery every two to three years, buy one from Amazon or eBay for a couple of dollars, and you're set. You can even replace it yourself. You don't have to take it to anyone. And I think this Mecha Quartz chronograph movements are catching up. We're starting to see more of them come to the market in watches like the Spinnaker, like Dan Henry, like Undone watches. So a few watch companies are taking advantage of this movement. And I'm also gonna take a guess that in the next few years, we're gonna see more and more watch companies utilizing these Mecha Quartz movements. As previously mentioned, it has a stainless steel bracelet. And the bracelet is actually pretty good. I mean, it's not fantastic, and I'm gonna talk about the negatives. But on the positive side, it has solid links, solid end links, screw in place pins, which is very surprising. I've seen much more expensive watches use just push style pins or even the ones with the collar. So that's a very nice welcomed addition. The clasp is also pretty good. Pagani logo here, polished center link and brushed on both sides. Open clasp as such. It has this hinge mechanism, just like a Rolex watch. So you can see here, bit of a hinge. A very similar clasp to a Rolex watch. Of course, it's not as well-made as a Rolex watch, but you're not expecting Rolex quality 
for $80. And it even has a half length. A bit tough to open, but there it is. Should give you about 5 millimeters of extra extension in case your wrist swells up during those hot summer days. And snaps back in place like that. Really good use of that technology. Even more expensive watches don't have that. That's why this watch keeps on surprising me kind of every step of the way. The negative sides of this watch, first of all, this first protruding link that cheapens the look of the watch. Secondly, just the overall quality and the feel of the watch. It doesn't feel that great. It feels pretty good. It's better than a lot of Seiko bracelets for much more money, but it still, still doesn't feel great. If they slightly improved the quality of this bracelet, got rid of these first protruding links and improved the dial quality slightly, this watch would be a killer. As it stands right now, the watch is still really, really good. It's probably one of the best watches that I have reviewed in this price category. All right, so that was the review part. Now let's talk about this watch. First of all, the design. I do wish it was a little bit more original and a little bit less of a copy for Rolex Daytona. Now, I personally was never really into Rolex Daytonas. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. A few months ago, before the quarantine, Bond and I went to a Rolex AD. I like to stop by every so often just to see what kind of inventory they have. They had a Rolex Daytona, of course not a stainless steel one, that would be dreaming to walk in and see a stainless steel Rolex Daytona at the AD. This one was in platinum. I tried it on and it's amazing. I got why people love Rolex Daytona. When I put it on the wrist, it just it felt good. It felt solid. It felt amazing. And it better have because it was 95000 Canadian dollars. Now, since I was $94,900 short, I decided to review one of these watches because it does look like a Rolex Daytona. And if you don't have the ability to go to the ADs and try a Rolex Daytona, or if you don't have ability to see a stainless steel Rolex Daytona in person, maybe you're getting one of these watches and trying it on for a little bit just to see how you would like actually buying a Rolex Daytona. So coming at it from that point of view, having it be a copy of Rolex Daytona so you can see what the real one would feel like on your wrist is kind of forgivable. Nevertheless, as I said, I do wish this one came in a more original design. Then it wouldn't have this stigma of being a complete copy of Rolex Daytona. And I think even more people would be attracted to it because the specs for price are quite amazing. Love it or hate it, it's amazing what you can get for around $80. Just to put that in perspective, that's less than 1% of how much a brand new Rolex Daytona would cost from the AD, or less than half of a percent of how much a stainless steel Rolex Daytona costs on a gray market. This watch costs less than one link of a Rolex bracelet. That's mind boggling how expensive Rolex watches have gotten and how inexpensive this watch really is. It still has the sapphire crystal, it still has the ceramic bezel, it's got all the bells and whistles that you would want. Sure, it doesn't have the automatic chronograph movement, but in this price category, do we even want it to have an automatic or a mechanical hand wind chronograph movement? So this uh, Mecca Quartz movement is kind of the best hybrid, in my opinion, in this price category, let's say under $200. This is the second Pagani Design watch that I reviewed and they continue to impress me. I think they're starting to separate themselves with this watch and the Rolex Mariner homage from the rest of the competition in this AliExpress cheap Chinese homage watches category. So well done, good for you Pagani Designs and I still wanna review that uh, Submariner homage in the future, the one with the Seiko NH35 movement. I appreciate you watching this video until the end. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss more videos like this one in the future. And leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this watch. And also let the rest of us know if you have any experience with this specific watch. Maybe you owned one, maybe you flipped it. Leave your experience below. That might help somebody else make up their decision whether they should buy one or not. By the way, today on my wrist, I'm wearing Yama Superman Heritage with the maxi dial. I did a full review of this watch. That video can be found on the YouTube channel. I will also leave it linked in the description below. Also in the description below, there are two other links. The first link is a secret link. Have a look if you're curious. The second link is a link to bondnatostraps.com. If you're looking for a good quality native strap and want to support 
this YouTube channel at the same time. Buying one of these NATO straps is a great way to do so. Thanks for watching. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I'll see you guys next time. That's it.